Welcome back everyone to our day two of Smart Classrooms version three. Yesterday we had a look at how do we actually create our lesson? How do we add some teaching content and some questions so that our students can respond to the teaching uh, and learning online? Today we're gonna have a look at the next step. How do our students see our lesson? Uh, what are they going to do on their end? And then how do we report on uh, their progress and their marks if we've submitted any questions to them? So first of all, let's jump in and have a look at what the students are going to see when we grab the URL from our lesson and we either send it to them for them to open via an email or instruct them through our learning management system to click on the link and launch the lesson. So let's jump across now and have a look. Okay, so here's my student device. They're gonna click on the link. In my case, I've copied it from my learning management system. So I'm going to paste the URL for my lesson into the browser there. I've already logged in. If the students weren't already logged in or you don't have single sign-on turned on at your school, the system will prompt them for their username and password. So they'll enter that. So here's the lesson that we created uh, yesterday. We can see the text, we can see the video. If I tap on the video, uh, if I made any edits to it, they're going to uh, only play the edited chapters for me. Okay, and then I've got the questions. So as I'm going through, I'll be able to answer the questions by tapping on the correct results and I'll also have a little space to fill in my missing words. Okay, once I've gone through and I've uh, answered all the questions, I've got the ability to submit my results. Now the system is going to save the results and it's going to close the lesson for that user. Now what that means is they're going to be able to come back and review the material that I've set there for teaching but they won't be able to change their answers. So if they've submitted their answers at home and then they've called their friends in the afternoon and had a bit of a chat and gone, oh, I've answered question two wrong, they're not gonna be able to come back in and change it. So we go okay and the system submits my answers. Okay, once it's done that, it also gives me a result straight away as to how I went. So it tells me what my name is. It tells me that I've got two out of three of the questions correct. And it will go through and, uh, and say that question number two, the correct answer was actually yes, it wasn't no. Okay, so that's what the students are going to see from their end. If they wanted to, they can print those out themselves. But answering the lessons and interacting with the lessons are as easy as just opening it up and following the prompts. So now that we've had a look at how our students are going to interact, let's see how it appears for us as teachers once they've logged in and also submitted their responses. All right, so here's my uh, teacher screen. I've opened up SmartSwin and I've logged in and I wanna bring up the lesson that we are wanting to see the results for. So I'm gonna go over to Smart Classrooms and I'm gonna click on my lessons and this is gonna show me all of the lessons that I've created in the past as well as any raw TV for Education videos that I've been adding to my favorites and uh, over the last couple of weeks, months, however long you've had the subscription for. We've got the ability to search for the material or the lessons that we're after. So if I go up to the filter, I can punch in my search term here. Okay, and that's identified that lesson for me. So if I go and click on that lesson, it's gonna open that lesson up for me. Okay, now what I wanna do first is I wanna see, first of all, how many students are currently logged into my lesson or have logged into my lesson. So the way that we do that is by coming down to the toolbar at the bottom and clicking on the report button. And under report, we have an option called the attendance report. So if I click on that, it's telling me that currently we have two users that are active on my lesson. 
we've got Benaya, and we've got the lib user. Okay, we can see that the last time this person was online was uh, 22nd of April. And we can see that they're online via that green online tick. Now, if there were uh, any issues with that user where they got up from their desk and they went and made themselves some afternoon tea, the system will identify that and go, they haven't been interacting with the lesson. So first of all, what it's going to do, is it's gonna give them an, an opportunity to interact. And it's going to change their status from online to idle. And it will identify that through an orange logo. And that's just telling us that the lesson's open on their device, but they're not necessarily interacting with it. Once the system has identified that they're no longer on the lesson, they've closed the browser, they've navigated to a different app and they're now playing a game instead of interacting with the lesson, it's going to change that to red. So if we are running a flipped classroom or an online classroom, we're expecting all the students to be on our Zoom sessions and looking at the content, we can actually track what they're actually doing via the audience report. Now, if we do suspect that the students are um, misbehaving or not looking at the contents, or we're wanting to say, look, you know, we don't want you interacting online anymore, we can go ahead and click the close button. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to register that that person can no longer submit answers to the lesson. So they'll still be able to view the teaching material, but they will no longer be able to submit responses. If for whatever reason, we have published our lesson, Benaya has gone ahead and submitted his answers to the system. We've had a bit of a, a chat about uh, the material and the fact that some of them got the answers wrong. We can say, I want to reopen the lesson and I'm gonna give you 15 minutes to change your answer we can go ahead and select reopen on each student that's currently signed in, or we can go ahead and click reopen all. And that's gonna open up all the users that have logged into my account, uh, sorry, logged into my lesson uh, and give them that opportunity. After that 15 minutes, we can then go close all. And again, those answers are saved into the system. So the attendance report, that's gonna give us real time information as to who's logged in, uh, and when was the last time that they logged in? So if we don't see uh, Jedediah listed on that list, it means that he's never logged into our session. So the first report is our audience report. The next thing we want to have a look at is how have the students gone with answering the questions? So we can do that via the print button. Within print, we've got a number of options. We're gonna go ahead and click lesson results. And just like on the student view, it's going to give us a report telling us how Benaya has gone with his lesson, but it's going to print off one of these worksheets for every single user that has logged in and interacted with my session. So if we do have a student that's logged in and they've uh, looked at the material, but they haven't answered the questions, their results report is gonna show that they've got zero out of three and they got all of them incorrect. Okay, we can see that the system's also telling us which was the correct answer for all those questions. All of these reports come out on one A4 piece of paper for each individual student. So if I was to print that from my classroom, I will be able to take one sheet for every student and put it into their portfolios. So when we do go ahead and we start doing parent-teacher interviews, um, or we need to do our semester marks, we've got that information from the online uh, system in paper format in their portfolios ready to submit. Okay, so there are a number of other different reports that are available in Smart Classrooms version three. We are gonna to touch on those in future YouTube live sessions. So make sure that if you haven't already done so, you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And that's gonna make sure that you get live updates of when we're running these live events where you can interact and you can post questions to the chat console. 
Uh, it's also going to give you live notification of any additional teaching material that we're going to be pushing to uh, the channel itself to get you guys up to speed with all the features and functions that are available through the platform that you're using. If you're a Facebook user, make sure you subscribe to the Functional Solutions International Facebook page. Again, we're going to be posting information uh, and we've also got some campaigns running where you can go into the draw to win. Uh, I think the first one is going to be a JB Hi-Fi voucher and we're planning a few more of those over the, the next couple of weeks and months. So if you haven't already done so, jump over and subscribe. If you're a teacher and you're interested in updates on what's happening with TV for Education, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to our Twitter channel and that's TV for Education on Twitter. So once again, my name is Quinton. Please stay safe. Make sure you're washing your hands. Uh, if you're sick, stay home. We're really looking forward to pushing a lot more of this content through the YouTube channels for you guys to absorb wherever you are in isolation. See you later.